sharp as f What's up guys, Dan here, Cold Cracker. Remember when I posted the video with Sharp AF and everybody reported me because they said I'm saying bad words? Um, I do, <laughs> and it makes me laugh every time. But that was our slogan for a little bit with all our tools, um, Sharp AF. So um, today we're gonna be talking about that. We're gonna be talking about sharpening. Um, all the, see, we have all these different stones and different stuff with it. It's gonna be great. It's gonna, it's gonna keep you sharp and to the point. <laughs> Now I normally hold quite true to my word when it comes to outdoor things, things that work for me, I try to share with you. And one of those things that I'm not gonna waver on is that I think the best way for most people to sharpen is to look down at their blade and take their stone and work it back and forth this way because it allows the individual to find the proper angle to stone relationship to get that perfect edge. But. But being super open-minded, I do understand that some individuals want to lay their stone flat and sharpen that way. So today, what we're gonna be looking at is a few little tips when it comes to laying down your stone and running your blade over the top of it. It's gonna be great. So we're gonna start with our sharpening puck. We just have it here on a stump. And we're gonna talk about sharpening an ax or the same thing would apply if you're gonna sharpen your knife, okay? So what we're gonna do here is is we are going to create a relationship between the angle, that is the bevel on our ax, okay, up to the point to the stone. So the first step is we're gonna lay our tool directly onto the stone and then we're gonna angle it forward, towards forward being towards the blade and we should quickly find that bevel. That means that the cut, and the angle on the tool itself is now matched up with the stone, okay? At that point, we need to keep that angle in place and we can either push along the stone or drag away from the stone. I have not seen any difference in trying both techniques in order to sharpen our tools, okay? We wanna make sure we're keeping consistent pressure wherever we are actually cutting. So when I say cutting, we're cutting metal away from this with our stone. So I like to keep my fingers along this edge here, okay? Find that correct bevel, and then I slide it forward, keeping constant, consistent pressure along there, okay? Then we would flip and go the other way. So I would hold it here, find that bevel, and then I would just start to slide this across, okay? Or if you're more comfortable, start to drag that back. Now one thing that you want to make sure while you're doing this is that if you are sharpening and we make 20 passes this way, that we also do 20 passes on this side. We wanna make sure that we keep our angles consistent, that they meet in the middle and they don't start to get lopsided. But now one thing you probably noticed really quickly is that as I'm doing this, my stone is moving around. So I'm gonna show you a quick fix, bushcraft style and just backwoods cabin style, how to fix that. Number one, we can bring along some nails. Nails are a great tool to carry along with you. They don't take up a lot of room and you can do a lot of stuff with them in the field over the years. I know we did everything from making an awl to rope spinners to now using with our sharpening kit. So as you can see here, what I'm doing is I am locking my stone in place. Now a couple things with this. You wanna make sure that as you're doing this, the head of your nail is down below your cutting surface itself because if it's up too high, we don't wanna take the edge of our tool and smash it into a nail, all right? That's gonna do opposite of what we want and that's not make it sharp, okay? We can actually ding or dent or chip out our blade doing that, all right? But you can see my stone is now locked in place really well. The other thing you wanna keep in mind too is that you don't wanna drive the nail so tight against the stone that you break the stone. Something's gonna give here, okay? The wood itself is already giving, allowing the nail to come in, and the nail is gonna definitely be stronger than the stone itself, so it's most likely gonna chip or break this. So be very careful when doing this. Also, don't take your ax and smash the middle of your stone, or now you'll have two. This now creates a much better surface, a lot steadier, and easy for me to come on in here and sharpen. All right, so if all else fails, you can go ahead and make yourself some little wooden nails, okay? 
All you want to do is find yourself some hardwood, cut it down a little bit bigger than toothpicks, put a nice point on it, and then drive that into the wood. Now, a few words of advice when doing this. This method itself, you're going to need to go into the grain of the wood itself. You're not going to be able to use a downed log for something like this because it's the same concept as when we split wood. We don't split wood if it's laying down as a log and you try to buck it, okay? It's a lot harder than when it's standing upright and we work with the grain. So these little wooden nails are gonna slide in amongst the grain. So it's important that you use an end cut for something like this. Alright, so you can see now at this point that my stone is very sturdy in there, but what you're also going to notice is that the wooden pegs are sticking up a little bit above the stone itself. Now, you can always drive these down a little bit further, okay, just being aware you don't hit the stone too hard, but the beauty with this type of setup is that even if while I am sharpening I hit one of the pegs, it's not going to damage it the same as the nail. Okay, so it keeps my stone in here nice and steady. I can work with two hands now, finding that angle, and making this thing sharp. All right, there you go, bushcrafters. Lots of good information on laying your stone flat in the field, making it secure, and keeping a good angle with it. Remember, rolling off of that bevel too much is what's gonna damage your blade, so just you need to be super aware of it. That's the hardest part of this method itself, that you can't see that and you have to go by feel. So if you like this video, hit the subscribe and like buttons below. You can also go over to coldcrackerbushcraft.com and check out all our awesomeness over there. And and um, I think that's about it. It is getting beautiful out. It is cooler. It is like flannels. I love it. So I'm going to go take a little walk around and get back to the shop. But uh, I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of their day. And uh, uh, that's about it. So stay in the woods.